and three, and two, and one. It's March 1st, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 544. And it's time to make a splash. I work. I'm not sure if that works. Did that work? Kind. Yeah. Maybe. Kinda. So what, maybe what, potentially possibly. What was my kind of of, of of reference supposed to be about, but might not have entirely worked? No, I don't know. <laughs> I think there's a lot more potential for like a thrust and a squirt, actually, in this case. Oh uh, God. Well, first the thrust. Then the pull out, then the squirt, then the splash. There you go. There it you is go. time to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. Bukaki okay. facial what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Jokes uh, continue. Anyway, what were we talking about? Tonight's episode. What yeah. are we? What are we discussing? Is that yeah. your question? Yeah. Mm -hmm producer all right so title is the return of bathhouses question mark mark <laughs> yeah we got we've got a theme going on <laughs> hopefully that's not going to continue <laughs> like every show is going to be a question <laughs> new, new, new series play playlist the question marks the questions all the questions all the questions although that could be a thing i don't know we've already got what <laughs> is <laughs> So what? here's here's my first here like so this is for the two of you as my co host here's the question before we dive into this did either of you know about the first linked article that like created this topic um I was like had you seen it like on Facebook or anything like that or social media I don't recall seeing it I but I feel like I heard something about it like through friends or friends who live in the area, but that's just me like being vaguely connected to people in California. Okay. Jeff? Nope. Okay. So here's the here's the reason why I asked, because people might be confused by the topic <laughs> title of the show being the return of bathhouses question mark. Because I'm sure a fair number of people are like, haven't y'all already talked about bathhouses? Like didn't your like one of your retired co-hosts actually talk about their first experience in a bathhouse? Like they already exist. Like what's with this return business? <sighs> so here's what it's all about. And you'll when when the show gets posted, you'll be able to see the link. So San Francisco Examiner uh, has a lovely article titled Mandelman bringing bathhouses back to the city. New ordinance would amend health code restrictions imposed in the 1980s because. San Francisco is considering uh, making bathhouses legal again about a quarter century after they had been outlawed. So in the midst of the – actually in the height of the AIDS epidemic, they were outlawed legally in San Francisco in 1984. And this is a big deal because mm -hmm. bathhouse industry took a real hit once that ordinance went into place at quote-unquote the gay mecca. Many bathhouses had difficulty with justification of business in mm -hmm. their locales. Now, I don't I didn't do the research. I'm sure someone out there maybe has done a PhD paper or should hint hint on like gay culture and the impact of politics because like when one thing happens in one place, it can have a ripple effect in other areas. Mm -hmm. And for this very issue um, because we scientifically did not know what we know now all the way in 2020 
we 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 didn't have the insight or the knowledge that HIV had been around for hundreds of years. Like this is something I've learned in my new job capacity in reading up on stuff is that we've actually been able to trace track precursors back through time. And so for many, many years, there was a presumed a patient zero. Um, it's even referenced in and the band played on and like other like documentaries and films and stuff like that. But this individual known as patient zero, who was a flight attendant, I believe from Canada was actually not patient zero. Like that was a, a misnomer. It was a presumption that this individual had been HIV positive and was having lots of like unprotected sex with other men. and was just spreading it all around. Um, the reality is, is that it had modified and manifested over time, but in 84, we didn't know as a medical community and as a general public, like what was going on. And so San Francisco decided to close their bathhouses legally out of a precaution and protection measure. Fast forward to 2020. And so now we have this gentleman, uh, district eight supervisor, Raphael Mandelman, who by the way is very handsome. I will say <laughs> um, there's a lovely headshot of him. Uh, for those of you that can't see it, he's uh, shaved, close crop, almost bald head, glasses, beard, suit tie, you know, checking some boxes. Uh, so this is just a couple weeks ago, February 16th, when this article came out. And basically they're explaining that he represents the Castro neighborhood and introduced an ordinance on Tuesday calling – uh, for the Department of Public Health to amend the city standards established for the 80s for adult sex venues that effectively shut down gay bathhouses. And it's kind of a big deal because, um, you know, the the industry really took a hit, you know, because of the epidemic. And since then, there's been a lot of discussion about the uh, impact of prep in the community and that was kind of one of my questions was has prep created a turning point for msm um, which stands for men who have sex with men uh mm -hmm. you know in terms of their uh, freedom or liberty uh their their you know behaviors basically some say mm -hmm. that by having truvada and now discovi on the market um you know that men are more free willed, I guess, or less cautious <laughs> in terms of their, their sex. And that like kind of has, can have a ripple effect in a way about bathhouses. So I wanted to have this kind of discussion what you guys think about this. Like, you know, I, as a, as a gay man who's in his mid forties and has lived through this entire thing from like being young, really young and not understanding the AIDS epidemic and then growing up and being fearful because of all the messaging and worrying that like having sex with anybody anywhere was like immediately a death sentence and all of this stuff and then getting the education to where we are today about safe sex practices and all the things that come with that. I, I have talked about it before on the podcast. I am no stranger to bathhouses. I have been going to bathhouses since, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say about 2001, 2002. So <laughs> it ain't no big deal to me, but I've been to them in other cities other than obviously San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And most are independent. Most are standalone, except for uh, there's at least one franchise called The Club, mm -hmm. which there's one in Cleveland, one in Columbus. There's one in Columbus. There was one in, in New Orleans. Indianapolis. There's one in Indianapolis. Yeah, Indianapolis. I've been to that mm -hmm. one. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe there's one in Dallas. Um, Give me a second, honey. Yeah, let's just, let's just, that's let's true. Just <laughs> David let's just got pulled out and off. But you know, they were they were kind of like the it company, and um, they used to promote for a long time. Like if you got a pass at the club, like X, wherever that city was, you either got a discount or you were recognized in another city. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like the zoological society of America. Like if you or yeah, the AZA, the American Zoological Association. Like if you get a membership at a particular zoo that has that or an aquarium, usually you are connected to others and either get a discount or a reciprocal pass. So just um, put that out there for all y'all that didn't know that. Mm. So some of the bathhouses uh, kind of do that, but they've been around all this time. They've not gone away. In fact, in most mm. recent history, there's been uh, 
a lot of discussion oh. amongst men that I know about going to like Korean day spas, which mm-hmm. people talk about. And Damon, you even talked about it, I believe. Like you went to one and it's like very bathhouse feel, like mm-hmm. structurally in a way, but it is not all about the let me extract yeah. your DNA. Yeah, yeah. So first, first of all, um, there's clubs in Columbus, Dallas, Fort Lauderdale, Houston, Indianapolis, Orlando, St. Louis, and Miami. Um, okay. So though there's not one in Cleveland. I think you're talking about Flex, which is a different brand that does um, bathhouses in multiple cities as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah, so like the Korean spas are pretty pretty much it is a it's like a, it, it's like if you've been to like a japanese if you've seen like anime the japanese bathhouses or whatever where um um it's meant to be like you're actually there to relax and use like the bath to like not necessarily clean yourself but you're just kind of there to um chill and 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 hydrate as it were and hot spring uh yeah, like a yeah. hot spring, like where you're like there's hot tubs and um, there are um, there's usually like a big waiting pool where there's multiple like um, areas where there's like different jets that can like you know massage your back and and and, and um, your shoulders and what have you. Um, you are nude and everyone is nude um, and they are separated by sex. So men are in one area, women are in another. And um, really that's, it, it was, it was, it's a very interesting and different experience to where it's not all about the D as it were, although you're probably seeing a lot of D. Um, you just, it's just a lot of just like as people walking around. Now the other, just to kind of like throw it out there because people are, you know, I'm sure people have wondered, Korean bathhouses are open to everyone so you have young children you have young adults you have you know older you know people in all in the same area and it is literally just like you get a locker um you take off your clothes you are nude you get it you usually can't remember no you get a towel like a big like fucking towel and And that's about it. And maybe a key so to your locker or something. We got on a, Damon's end? Yeah, we got frozen Damon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, there he is. Hey, you're back. You cut out Ooh. on this for a while. You. Oh. Who, me? Ooh. <laughs> you were kind of doing uh. your rendition of, of Black Frozen. <laughs> Just let it Lovely. go. Lovely. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't even know where I was at. Anyway, I'm not sorry. You were just explaining about like that the audience is like you know where the participants at a Korean spa are pretty much everybody and anybody. Yeah, all ages, all different ages, and, and the areas are pretty much you know there's different water features like there's hot areas, there's cold cold areas, there's showers. You're always supposed to bathe before you get in anywhere, so you take a shower before you get in a tub like in the tubs or anything. So, you know, it's, it's, it was really nice and relaxing. And, and as I mentioned before, you're not, when you're, you're not necessarily focusing on like playing around. If, I mean, you can go to a, you can go to a gay bathhouse and not really play around, but like times that's kind of the point, but yeah, it's, for it's, others, it's, it is actually, basically, yeah. it's an actual bathhouse yeah you know it is a a, a a a place where you go to relax in water um uh, and it's not a place where you go and relax quote unquote in water <laughs> right. uh, sometimes strenuous activity is involved um that's because like it is more of a relaxation sort of thing in the, mm-hmm. those type of bathhouses. Yeah. Those are what an actual bathhouse is. Gay bathhouse, on the other hand, 
a bit different. <laughs> It what? can be about that. Wait, when some of them can be equipped with slings. <laughs> you know, I mean, those well, aren't in, you in, in your 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 uh, your uh, general path house. I mean, sometimes there is an ursine breeding device. Um, <laughs> you know, one may want those things. I just face bombs. <laughs> so, yes, gay bathhouses, like are a lot more like your YMCA uh, kind of concept in that it's, well, it depends. I mean, honestly, they come in different size, shapes and formats, but most of them have some element of a gym. Now, mm -hmm. I use the word gym very loosely because <laughs> some of them are legit gyms. Like they have all of the machinery, all of the weights. They even have, you know, treadmills and ellipticals and, you know, so it's it's you legit. Get gym memberships. Yeah. Right. So like you could use it as a workout facility. And then once you're done working out, you can go work, work out. out. Work it out. Uh -huh. <laughs> so <laughs> some do not necessarily have that, but they typically have lockers. They have cleaning areas like, you know, showers um, and hot tub, pool, sauna, you know, sauna, uh, dry sauna, okay. wet sauna, all sorts of different things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it just, I was, I, when this came up across the newswire, um, you know, I was like, oh, well, already then. And, you know, it, it, to be fair, you know, they, they go on and explain in this article um, that, you know, uh, one of the quotes that comes from it. Um, uh, regarding about the change in rules, it says there is no evidence showing that the monitoring of patrons at commercial venues that allow people to engage in sexual activity results in safer sex. Indeed, some researchers have concluded that monitoring has little or no effect on risky behaviors. Ding. So, and then one of the other things that's like being referenced is that in the city, uh, in 2018, the number of new HIV cases has dropped to 197, which is a 58% decrease since 2011. So in seven years, like the number of HIV cases has gone down by more than half. And that's per the Department of Health that they are quoting in the article. So the whole point is like, hey, what what, what are we doing about this? Um, so, you know, and they go on to say, when properly operated by providing access to safer sex education materials, supplies, and HIV and STD testing, these venues assist rather than impede efforts to control the transmission of HIV, Mandelman said. Which I'm in agreement. Like I don't, I don't hardly know. Well, let me take that back. The very first bathhouse I ever went to, which was more like a haunted house. I'll <laughs> tell that story again some other day. Um, most of them, like except for that one, even that one probably had some like, like safe sex kind of stuff up on the walls, like at the entrance. But most of them have like pamphlets, like materials, resources. They are listed in the local like gay establishments. Um, they mm -hmm. have advertising, they sponsor things locally, like they're involved in pride. So they're not these like seedy, like quiet, you know, kind of business um, elements. I mean, there, there are some of those I'm sure that are still around depending on what the local culture is like uh, for the community. But most of them are, you know, pretty well established and, and um, very open about it and very supportive. Uh, to like having testing and things. So the fact that this is coming up, I was just kind of like, yeah, that's a thing. And we haven't talked about bathhouses in a while. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it, it, to me, I don't think this will have a huge ripple effect, but it's, it's one of those things where sometimes we hear about a law that is overturned or taken off the books and people are just kind of like, that was still a thing. I thought, I thought we already dealt with that, like, or addressed it. Um, like, as an example, if there was a law on the books that for some reason still listed, you know, that it would not allow interracial marriage for some reason, hmm. I'd be like, excuse me? Didn't we already litigate this, like, whole thing? Supreme Court, you know, kind of dealt with that? Yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, So I, I mean, there, this is one of the reasons why we we have a – have that the, the three branches of government in our nation, uh, legislative, uh, executive, and judicial, is all of them have to work together and toward to enforce, enforce a law. 
and they have checks and balances between them. So while the legislature can pass a law, if it's not executed by the police force or, or anything, then it's kind of null and void. The law is there, but it just no one's actually enforcing it at all. Um, which can usually be the facts such as for facts like if there was still a law in the book somewhere saying interracial marriages, you know, you can't have interracial marriages. It, if they're just ha having interracial marriages anyways, and they just no one bothered to do anything to overturn the law, law so that it officially was no longer on the books. And I mean, not much you can do about that. Uh, but make sure that later on being like, oh, wait a minute, that law is still there. Let's get rid of it. Either the legislature takes care of that or um, somebody sues and the justice say, mm -hmm. oh, overturned. Just like the, the yeah. uh, legalization of gay marriage. And mm -hmm. that wasn't done because that wasn't done because of the legislature. That was done because of, of a ruling by the Justice Department. So, um, it, so having those checks and balances come in. Uh, in this case, uh, I, it's one of those things where I'm wondering if it would have, like, if somebody started in new, uh, if it would have actually been enforced. Uh, but uh, I, but a lot of people are probably more along the lines of. Uh, you, is when they're if they're looking into doing it, they would be like, "Oh no, there's this law in the book, so we're just not going to do it." Yeah, and uh, and it definitely is. I mean, at this point in time, back when they made the law in 1984, I think it was. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where it's kind of like a panic. It's like, oh my, this is yeah. a bad thing. We want to make sure. To yeah. Do this. So we're going to put these strict strict rules in place for for these sort of establishments to follow. They follow them, everything's mm -hmm. a okay. If they don't, mm -hmm. then bad things can happen. We'll find them and uh, force them to make all these expenditures or something, or shut them down. Yeah. Um, right. And mm -hmm. nowadays we're like, well, now that we know more, we have more things in place. I mean, we may be able to do like have like the spirit of what we were looking for in the law, but not do it so strictly as what they're saying maybe I have to say you must have provide condoms or um, um, have these certain things available at the establishment um, uh, to to help uh, promote uh, safer sex and and uh, STD testing um, but otherwise everything you know everything's just as as you originally had it Mm -hmm. Right. It's <sighs> because I don't want to say it's complicated. Yeah, because there's lots of laws that are like this where just things have changed. It's just we haven't gone out and actually made the change. For example, the Electoral College. The reason for the Electoral College originally is no longer a concern anymore, really. Because mm -hmm. back then, communication um, and uh, 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 giving the information that everybody needs in order to make an informed vote uh, for the president of the United States, States wasn't necessarily right available to, or was it easy to get count tally up the votes between all of these different states so they have representatives from each of the states come and make the votes on their behalf so but nowadays we probably could just call it a a, a, gener a, a just by the votes we don't really need the electoral college because all the information's out there it's much much faster to get the results of the voting etc mm -hmm. um which if that if the electoral college was abolished we may have had a different president now or different presidents in the past i don't know how many elections 
um, because of of the actual popular vote versus uh, going with the electoral college. Mm-hmm. And I think like what you're bringing up, Jeff, is basically you know that we have the ability to modify as needed, quote unquote. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as time progresses and we see things and we look at it and be like, oh, well, that's not really a thing. I mean, you know, like we've we've seen over the past couple of years how even in the gay male community, there's been a lot of like shift change culturally in regards to like sexual independence and recognition of identity mm-hmm. and how you deal with that. Like in my workplace, I'm still I, I say still, I'm addressing with people who recognize the situation that has arisen with pronouns being utilized, but they feel forced to do it and they're not happy about it. And at mm. the same time, they're kind of giving me this impression of that they're grumpy about it. Like, they're like, why do I have to do this? And I'm like, well, you don't have to do it, but it's a polite thing to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I'm trying really hard to, as I age to not turn into <laughs> like a, a, a farcical representation of my generation that refuses to evolve or mm-hmm. modify and grow and understand. I imagine that may come at a certain point. Maybe I'll be 70. Maybe I'll be 80. Maybe I'll be 50. I don't know. Um, you know, where I just kind of can't recognize or understand things. But I think that if you re kind of center from a place of how important is this and how does it impact me, you know, if it doesn't impact you directly, then maybe it's not really for you, but you can be aware of what it does for other individuals. Mm -hmm. Cause I imagine there's a great number of men who are like, who gives a shit? Like, cause they've never been to a bathhouse and they, Mm-hmm. Don't see what no one thinks they're ever going. Yeah. Like, I will say one of the things that, I mean, it, it, I knew about this, you know, because, you know, I've seen, you know, San Francisco and I think a couple of other cities, they went the, the drastic route because of, of, you know, the epidemic and people were dying. And it was somehow related to men having sex with men. So they didn't know how at the time and and everything. So they just decided to eliminate, crack down on any way to like keep this from spreading, and you know it it it, it was it was a big thing. So I understood the reasons behind it from a like like Jeff said a drastic measure. Holy shit! Like we need to do something. Our people are dying. Kind of thing. Right. Um, Over the years, I think we have gotten more knowledge, more intelligence, more education. um, And we know better now than we did then. And that has affected things. It seems odd that it is almost 30 years later and they're just now thinking about bringing back bathhouses. But again, there's a other side to that like are they necessary are they needed now as they were back then you know the article um from the san francisco the san francisco examiner article kind of like talks about like um they were a a gathering spot for people to engage in you know homo- you know homosexuals to engage in sexual activity it was kind of meant for though that kind of thing when there was homophobia all over the place so um is it still necessary now with apps and, 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 um, you know, not necessarily quick, you know, sex clubs and whatever, but like apps and, and sites and such where you can, you can kind of very quickly get to access to things like that. I don't know. Um, as someone who has been going to bathhouses for about 20 years now, um, off and on here and there, um, I enjoy the experience that I have had there, but is it is it the same then as it was, or is it the same now as it was then? Mm-hmm. Not really. I mean, a lot of the stuff is, well, it is kind of the same. 
excuse me, but I think people are being more open and honest with each other and about what they want. And I don't necessarily need the bathhouse to get what th- those things. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, on the, uh, on the other hand of that is that's totally valid. It, it, our, our world has changed and we have the apps and everything, but should we be having a law in place that essentially not, not uh, blatantly, but uh, essentially is outlawing mm-hmm. the bathhouses. If somebody wants to open a bathhouse and there's maybe not you, but maybe other people who would prefer instead of driving out to Berkeley to mm-hmm. go to a bathhouse, if they could stay in, in the, or go to the Castor or South of Market or, or wherever it ends up opening up, up inside the city of uh, San Francisco um, it, to, to, and go to a bathhouse. Shouldn't they be able to? I mean, it, it, yeah. it, that's their choice. And there's even uh, events that happen in San Francisco, in the San Francisco area, which I think it's you know, is Folsom, Folsom in San Francisco. Am I getting that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the one of the people could have an event during that time mm-hmm. at a bathhouse. But right yeah. now, it's not the 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 rule, laws on the books are preventing people from yeah. opening a bathhouse to provide those services to the mm-hmm. population while they're in San Francisco. So, I mean, the necessity maybe it's not necessary. Would it be nice? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, the, it, it, those people want to go, but it's it's not like it has to happen but these rules in any case these laws that are on the books aren't necessary anymore so they right for all all that matters they may be able to uh, uh remove or amend the laws to make it more more viable uh for uh pe- people to open a bathhouse in uh the san francisco area but maybe they don't Maybe they just don't. But having those laws on the books is are they necessary anymore? Right. Well, and sure. and you know the the reality is like there at the end of the article explains that Eros on Market and Dolores Streets is, are one of the few operating gay saunas in the city. So to me, this is sort of semantical, but it's about how a business operates and how it like is licensed. Mm-hmm. That like they had to like some businesses had to learn to change in order to exist at all or they just got shuttered um mm-hmm. also joke i uh had said in the live chat did jeff say berkeley for a bathhouse location a group there so they do reference that residents would have to travel to steamworks in berkeley for a more traditional gay bathhouse experience if they lived in san francisco berkeley, so California. correct so i think that there's a an aspect to this whole point of the article of mm-hmm. being written is like legally this thing came about a quarter of a century ago mm-hmm. and it's still on the books and it's yeah. preventing things. Yeah. There are laws here. So for example, just to kind of like throw it back here, there are laws here in Cincinnati that prohibit public bathing. Like the grander scheme, like these are old antique laws from like back in the days um so public bathing so the idea of having a bathhouse in cincinnati would never happen because for some reason don't ask me why there are laws prohibiting public bathing i think jim told me at one point from a historical aspect there was something about um the spread of a disease at the time you know Mm -hmm. and that's why the law was put into put into place um but you know that's I, I want to say hundreds of years ago, but I could be wrong. But that, that's why it was put in there. Um, but in a sense, because of it, there will never be a bathhouse in Cincinnati. There are other rules in the books here in the city about um, pornography, essentially, um, that make it so that you cannot sell anything adult-oriented in the city limits. Um so that has definitely stifled not just like um, 
like a bathhouse experience, but like adult bookstores and 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 peep shows and movies and strippers and all those kind of things. It's done a lot against that here, and I maybe I'm since I've been here long enough that's kind of rubbed up <laughs> rubbed in me um, in a sense. Um, it'd be great for some of those things to get taken away, and I agree with you, Jeff. Like, is the law necessary? No, like the law in, in San Francisco, I don't think it's necessary anymore. Um, and if this works, if um, if Raphael can get this changed and removed, then great. It'll probably help the city. And I don't know if it'll help the city. That's just, that's being like overly. But it'll be you know it'll give people an opportunity to do something that hasn't been able to be done for twenty plus years. Mm-hmm. Right. So. That being said, I'm going to go completely inappropriate, so here's your spoiler warning. Mandelman, the guy that, like, is bringing this up, he cute. So, <laughs> I'm like, you MSM? Like, this rule changes? We gonna see you at the bathhouse? Oh my god. Because, <laughs> I'm down with that. I mean, fair. He is quite yeah. adorable. Now, I uh, the the thing that's sort of selling him for me right now from this one photo of him is the glasses because like he looks very like kind of sexy nerdy like you know mm-hmm. like I'm distinguished. Not, I'm not yes. sure nerdy, just somebody with glasses. Well, I mean, like he kind of looks like he crunches numbers, you know. <laughs> like I can see it. Sucks a mean dick. I don't know. So, and he's in a suit. Uh, yeah, and that helps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. So, yeah, like, there, there's that. Um, so, moving on, we have three articles that I ended up linking. Um, if you were listening to the pre-show, I kind of mentioned about how all three of them have something in common, sort of. Uh, they all like the number 10. Um, but, like, they're, the first two are basically about tips for when you go to the bathhouse. Um, you know, the first one is 10 tips uh, for your first trip to the bathhouse, which I thought was helpful. Um, the second one is 10 tips uh, for men visiting a spa, like regarding a, a bathhouse. So there's a little bit of overlap, but I thought that these were, you know, good sort of refreshers for folks. So if this intrigues you or stimulates you or, you know, you've been thinking about maybe going to one, perhaps you're going to a bear run in a city mm-hmm. where there is one that may or may not be a part of the events or has some like, you know, set up for a, a um, discount. It doesn't have to be a bear event. It could be a leather event. Um, mm-hmm. Damon and I have both been in the same bathhouse <laughs> at Claw. Um, you know, well, actually, Damon and Jim and I and hundreds of other people <laughs> were all there at the same time, including past guests and co-hosts. So, you know, uh, that was actually really fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this for a moment, David. Like, I was a little uh, in, trepidatious, like intimidated about going that day because I was like, I don't know how many people I'm gonna see. <laughs> that, I don't, that I don't necessarily want to see. Um, only because I have a I have a, a significant sense of about privacy and respect mm-hmm. for other people. Mm-hmm. And that's just, a, it's a me, it's a personal thing. Um, I feel that way about a great many individuals. Like, don't get me wrong, I have been in gay bars and I have seen people I know hook up in like a play space kind of area. Um, I usually turn the other way like Mm -hmm. it's i'm yeah to me sex is not always a spectator sport and even if it isn't a public space like and especially if i if i recognize you i'm more like the person that's gonna give you the head nod like i see you and i'm moving on like keep it punching i I see (laughs) you over there right and i'm just gonna go look over here (laughs) <laughs> like I, I, I like, like I I'm, not, of... I'm not the type that to be a best Judy. Like I'm just gonna say this, and David, you might agree with me. If both of us were in a bathhouse at the same time at the same space, and we happen to be say in the glory hole room, and we were standing side by side, go ahead. And you know, there was some individuals that were willing to please us from the other side, and we were standing by by side by side. I just don't know if I could, because. <laughs> I'm not the type that's be like, you know, hey girl, what's going on? Blah blah blah. You know? just, oh my god! <laughs> I just like, have. It's like, like being pee shy almost. Right. I just have like this thing, you know. It's like, yeah. nah. I I I will say this much to to that. Um, 
my usual personal issue, or not issue, my usual personal thing, like is like we know what's going on here. Everyone is here for a reason. Whether that's like I want to just you know swim in a pool and 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 hang out with my friends or whatever, whatever. Like the the so for those like again like the claw event is usually like it's the bare naked pool party. Just to kind of put it out there, it's meant to be. You go to the pool at the flex spa and you like you're able to use the pool because the hotel that they're normally they're at now does not have a pool. Right. So instead they go to the flex and this is where they have the pool party. So real several, tea, right? Several, several parties. Yeah, several different Over the pool course parties. of the weekend. Yeah, there's not just the there's like, you know, like hot leather men and, and muscle whatever and blah 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 and, and a pup one yeah. kind of and There's a bear one. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have different ones. But the main goal of them is to like get all the people like because they used to have they're used to having like a hotel with a pool and they used to have pool parties. Anyway real tea right now most of the people that go to the flex spa for the pool party are usually in the pool maybe half an hour to an hour tops. And they may come back to the pool at some point. But at certain points during the day, during the like four or five hours that they have the event, or Mm -hmm. three to four hours they have the event, people are gone. People are upstairs because the the whole, you know, flex is open to us. So you have like – People upstairs in the rooms. There are people in like the play spaces areas. There, there's there's all kind of things going on. Isn't, isn't that and, the reason why they have the pool well, parties there? So, good <laughs> question. Unquote, Jeff. You didn't here's, see the air quotes. I'm sorry, you can't see me. That's no, all right. So here's here's the thing, because when Damon and I went the first year, and Mr. Ray Smith, you know, previous uh guest host many times on on the pod Mm -hmm. uh he was the mc sort of headliner like he was the the host the host promoter there was going to be this contest thing in the pool if i remember there was this ridiculous unicorn inflatable thing that he owed so like when it when they the very first year that they had moved to the Westin downtown and everybody yeah. and Flex was replacing the pool party, everybody was used to going to a legit pool party within yeah. the host hotel, which there was you know we're not ignorant here there was a little grabby grabby you know kind of stuff going on under yeah. the water, mm-hmm. but it was also a pool in a hotel so like people were not outright having sex in the pool around the pool near the mm-hmm. pool, like you you under you understood was you get out you dry off you go back to a room. Yeah. Um, but being in a bathhouse, everybody was kind of, I think, pensive, like, and unsure whether or not we could actually use the whole bathhouse, because the structure of this facility is that the pool and the hot tub and the showers area is immediately right outside of the lockers. So, like, mm-hmm. you have to go through the lockers to get into the building structure, and then as soon as you basically dump out through the main door entrance, you are mm-hmm. in in more lockers, and then there's the hot tub and the pool and like the shower area. So technically, it could have been sequestered and limited. That's the mm-hmm. only like the wet areas, quote unquote, were the only places we could go. And I remember distinctly like having this whole like, do we get to do we get to the whole building? Like like is that part of like what we pay for, or like <laughs> are we limited because we got a special band or some shit? And then lo and behold, people started figuring out like, oh no, like whole place. Oh, no. yeah, it, you can go it's anywhere. All, all available. You can go that, all the places. You could go all the places, uh, inside, outside, and you name it. Um, so, yeah, like that was mm-hmm. a big deal because suddenly a pool party, became as David a... says, became a hey, right. splashy, splashy. This is kind of fun. I got to go. I need to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go dry off and 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 probably a shower off the, the pool water and then I'm going to go explore for hours, three hours. <laughs> like, <laughs> like cause that's how much time I've got. Like, so, okay. So again, no, no tea, all tea, you know, like that's the thing. Like that was the whole, you know, not the whole point, but that's kind of the thing that kept happening. So I know why everyone's there, right? You know why everyone's there. So like, and I knew like Gary was there. I knew like other you know friends of mine were there. Like I know why you're here. 
So for me, if I see you doing stuff or whatever, I'm I'm just gonna like I see it and I'm just gonna walk on by. Not I'm not gonna participate. It, I mean, let me let me rephrase. <laughs> if I know you that way, like right. if we are that kind of like that friendship where we could play around together, I might join. Emphasis on the might, like because to me I'm all about like you go have your fun, you do what you want to do, because I and because I know where I'm at. So I know I can probably go off and find my own fun. Like, it's not going to be hard. Um, having said that, like, Gary's kind of example with the glory hole and him standing next to me, like, I will admit that would probably be awkward only because Gary and I are like sis. Like, 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 right. <laughs> like um, now, different scenario, Gary's off like in one of the areas that are public and walking around doing stuff with someone else. Okay. Like I'll walk and I will see it and I will move right along. Cause guess what? I know I could probably get something over there um, mm. or right there, maybe in a different corner, you know, it, it, it's right. not that hard. And, <laughs> I, and that I think, hard. well, <laughs> or it is hard. <laughs> um, mm. There you go. So I, I'm talking <laughs> about, I think it's about like how well you know the other person. Like, you know, do we yeah. need to have a six foot bubble if activities yeah. are taking place? Or are we that good of friends that like I could just walk past, like I could high five you, I could slap you on the ass while like you're busy doing mm-hmm. something and be like, you go. All yeah. right, give it your bad self. Yeah. Um, for the record, anybody does that to me, I will probably freak the fuck out. Like inside, I will not probably have anything other than like resting bitch face come over my face really quickly, but inside I will be dying. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. you did that to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, yeah. like, notably, like, I have been in spaces where I have seen people that I know, and they be doing things, and I be doing things, not with each mm-hmm. other. And, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I I mean, you know, as I've you know, I, as I mentioned on the show before, Jim and I are open. Like, I've walked in on him at, at the bathhouse being pleased by others. And by others, I mean people I know. Like are are am acquainted with. Let me rephrase. Larry, yeah, and I was like, okay, and I like, I gave him a quick kiss, and I moved right on because I necessarily. I mean, it, it's it was he he was he was in. <laughs> it's a couple, like so it's him and a couple, and I know the couple, and right. they were both they were both engaging him. So uh-huh. to me, I'm like, I'm gonna be good. And you're going to have, I know, you know, you enjoy this. I'm going to like, I'm going to give you a kiss to let you know I see you and I love you. And I'm going to move on because I, I'm probably going to go or I've already come from having some fun already. And it's just my little way to check in. Right. And maybe you go find your own couple. Exactly. Um, I mean, I think at one point it did. (laughs) So, yeah. So, you know, the the reality of like of going into that type of atmosphere is um, you may run into people that, you know, maybe, maybe not, Uh, you know, and there's a different kind of way. So some of these articles that we're going to link that people are welcome to read over um, have some tips and things uh, that I think are important. So I wanted to kind of go through them relatively quickly. Uh, So the one I'm just going to kind of like two of them, I'm just going to highlight like kind of what their top tips are. Uh, Bring cash. Um, mm-hmm. It says some bathhouses are cash only. Uh, also, they may have vending machines. Now, I think in today's age, because this article was written five years ago in 2015, I mm-hmm. think now more than ever, like mobile app kind of stuff is very prevalent. Yeah. Um, so you may be able to use, you know, uh, Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever uh, mm-hmm. you know, to pay for things. Um, item number two, bring flip flops. This is the big one. Like, in case you yes. don't know. You could walk barefoot around a place, but most places do not give you protective footwear. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to be a slightly imbalanced, wobbly individual because you curvy, I say invest in some pool shoes or shower shoes. Uh Because a lot of places in the bathhouse are going to be wet and slick, and that's not necessarily the wet areas. (laughs) 
I mean, more than once yeah. in my life, I have nearly wiped out, like either face planted or ass planted because I stepped in something that I did not know what was there because I could <laughs> not see. Because notably, they are not always the best lit. Yeah, <clears throat> like I totally one hundred percent. That's like my that would be my like tip number one. Like bring fucking flip flops because one, <laughs> it's wet. In multiple places or in multiple areas, I would actually say bring like two pairs. And the only reason I would say bring two pairs is like there's a pair for walking around and there's a pair to use like in the wet areas. Cause you know, you might be a little like to me, I'm a little germaphobe and it's all these people showering and all that stuff. So like I would like to like have my feet kind of covered. And again, you don't know what's going on on the floor. Um, well, I mean, and that's just, and this is true about any gym. It doesn't even have to mm-hmm. be a bathhouse. Like, athlete's foot is very easy to contract if you're just like yeah. walking around with your bare feet. Mm-hmm. Unless you, you know, have some spray or some powder, or some lotion mm-hmm. that you put mm-hmm. on right away, mm-hmm. you know, afterwards. Um, yeah, but yeah, like that's my, like, I, big one is like to bring something to protect your feet. And they have, like, I was, it's funny, I was literally um, looking at Facebook before the show, and there were these, like, I guess they're like beat shoes or whatever. They're they look like, like they're they look like socks, but they have a like a sole, a rubber sole on them that you wear at the beach or you wear like walking around in the water and stuff. And like those are kind of I can see those being potentially used. Right. Um, this one particular article, the first one says, bring a drawstring gym bag. It basically says that if you opt out from a locker, you want like just a little handy kind of thing to be able to put some stuff in. Um, you know, some type of a small bag or whatever. Personally, I'm a huge advocate of getting a locker. Some bathhouses like have rooms. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. have to get a room. I'm, I'm like, get the locker and get the big locker. Like, <laughs> unless you know you got barely anything with you, you're gonna need the big locker because basically everything you are wearing, you're gonna have to take off. So keep that in mind. If it's in clement weather or it's this time of year in our area of the of the country in the Northeast, like it was snowing the other day, it's raining today, I have two to three layers on. This is not summer where it's beach and I could just like toss off a t-shirt and shorts real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're gonna footwear and like, and usually when I go, cause I'm OCD kind of this way, like I take shampoo, I take, you know, toothbrush mm-hmm. and you know, comb, hair product, like I'm, yeah. I'm that kind of gay. Yeah. So I just take a, I just basically take a duffel bag, like a gym bag mm-hmm. uh, in that case. Now, I thought this one was interesting. If you bought them, include your douche and lube in said bag, which I, I see no fault with this. I guess I didn't think about it because that's not my <laughs> game. Like, while I have accepted and, you know, and put upon myself the label of bottom, like, that is not what I plan to do at the bathhouse. So, <laughs> I guess I hadn't thought about that. I, my feeling on it is, like, I'm more, like, you know, prepare ahead of time. Like, I mean, that's going to happen. Go go do that at the hotel or at home or I, whatever before you get there. That's Agreed. Me. And and that's just me. And I agree with that, too. But, again, if you bring it, like, it, it's, you have, like, that's the thing, like, Always be prepared. Like, you know, if you weren't planning on it and then you find that, like, treasure trove of a dick that you, like, one up your butt, like, (laughs) you might want to go take care of business. But realize, though, but realize, though, like, you're not getting, like, a shower shot, like, shower area kind of situation in a bathhouse. Most of the time, the showers are open. Right. Most of the time, the showers are 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 multiple people, so like, you know, you're I, I you know this is why they're saying maybe bring like the like a a, a a smaller, more private use douche. <laughs> right. Well, and and you know your your comment, Damon, is really spot on about like the openness. The only privacy you have probably in the whole place is a couple of items: a separate one. For like separate rooms mm-hmm. and or like a like and there's not many of these in the bathrooms I find a stall mm-hmm. with a toilet. There's lots of like open urinals, trough, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's depending that stuff. on the bathhouse you go to, you're going to have um, a, you're going to have you're not going to have a whole lot of privacy. Yeah. Another big one that I hadn't thought of. It says don't take sips of anyone's Gatorade. And the moment I read it, I was like, got it. Like, yeah. You don't mm-hmm. know what's in their stuff. Do not get yourself like drugged. Um, you know, uh, 
Another one, don't be rude when guys are interested in you. They flirt with you and you're not interested back. Uh, like I said, there's no need to be mean. Just tell them yeah. you're not interested. Yeah. Move on. I'm sorry. I'm not interested. Yeah. So Our, I, I get told okay. like no are a simple, like if they're touchy, like a simple, a simple, gentle, like touch and a push. Like right. believe it or not, there is, there are like people talk about it all the time. There are some universal like signals um, when it comes to spaces like this, a, a, uh, a, the obvious, like, no, like can't head shake is a clear, like indication, like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. A push away, a turn away of your body to someone who is like trying to engage you while I'm not the personal biggest fan of like turning your, your body away from someone. is just like, fuck, like a big fuck you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it is something that you, I understand to me, like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Is it is it kind of a little rudy and douchey? Yeah, but it it does get the get the premise across that I don't want you to touch me. And and sometimes you could go from subtle to very obvious, like in terms of your messaging, like you know. Mm-hmm. So I've I've had that where it's like they aren't picking up and they don't understand that no means no. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So and we have talked about have to this do in our LTAS bathhouse episode, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. keep, you know, basically keep an open mind. You don't have to have sex. Uh, this is a funny one. Bring a friend. Uh, you know, if you want to have someone to have a chit chat with. So um, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of stuff that happens in these spaces. Uh, by the the article that I want to jump to before we wrap up is um, ten things I learned from working in a gay bathhouse. It was actually released in January of this year before the article about uh, San Francisco's like ordinance stuff. It's really good. Um, it's from a personal perspective about being a person who worked at a bathhouse. Uh, the way I read it at first, it kind of came across like the author is straight. But then as I read the whole thing, I was like, no. But I found that kind of intriguing. So... I would recommend that you you check it out. Um, it kind of talks about more of the behind the scenes stuff, like that you get approached all the time, um, the rigidness of like cleanliness um, that they do, and that actually working there could be a bit of a physical workout um, in terms of all like the stuff that you have to do as an employee there. So yeah, I thought that was a uh, was pretty good. This is a nice tie in. Neat little thing to read, and kind of gives you if you go to a bathhouse, realize. This is what the employees are experiencing, and maybe there's a few mm-hmm. things you probably should just help help them alleviate their anxieties mm-hmm. or uh, awkwardness. Yeah, like for me, I tend to, I tend to consider like the employees there as just like what like they're employees. Like they're they're not there to have fun. They're not there to gawk and stare. They're not there to be oogled and ogled. They're there to do their fucking job. So like. Right. I let them do what they're going to do. Now, have I encountered like a, a, a employee there that I'm like, oh, you're cute? Yes, definitely. But I know you're employed here. You're doing your right. job. So like. Leave them alone. Yeah, I'm good. Well, and, and one of the key aspects to keep in mind is that like. They're busy working, so they can't play now, and you don't know what the that particular location, their policies are. Maybe they can mm-hmm. be a patron on their off days as opposed mm-hmm. to off shift or whatever. Um, yeah, so I mean, you just kind of mind that stuff. I will say this, like as a as a caution point for anybody that's never been to one. If you're nervous about going, be aware that the staff at most of the bathhouses I know they're really like they're really familiar with each other. And because they work in a, in a most likely gay owned and operated establishment, they're very out. Mm-hmm. So if you're like more private, it may be overwhelming to go to one and to have the the person that's greeting you and talking to you and like taking your money and giving you a towel and a key for a locker or a room or whatever to be so laissez faire, like, you know, like bantery and witty and queeny and you know basically like you know yeah everybody's here to like to suck dick or whatever like if you're not ready for that kind of openness just be aware that like that may be a factor and it's not meant to Uh intimidate scare you but like i know the first time i went i was like oh okay (laughs) 
y'all y'all yeah. okay with this like yeah. and, and for those of those of you who are experienced feel uh, invite people who haven't and said hey i'll be your wingman i'll walk you through it it'll be fine it'll be fun mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's the reason why the one article said about bringing a friend i will say this if you go to a bathhouse with someone and you've never been there before they can be a really good duty to you if they give you the layout of the whole place, like just one walk around, mm -hmm. you know where everything the is. Tour. And, well, and you can kind of get dimensionally where you are, especially if you're not a good person navigating. It can be difficult, especially if they have a room that's like a maze mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out how the hell to get out of there. And like, mm -hmm. where's where's the bathroom in relationship to the drinking fountain? And like, are there vending yeah. machines? And is there an outdoor deck? Like, and how do I get yeah. back? And how many levels? Like, it could be a little overwhelming for some yeah. people, depending on it. Yeah. Like for me, as for an example, one of the things I always do, and we're just going to give this as a like, because I don't want to lose my glasses ever because I can't see without them. Mm -hmm. So I typically... I will walk the entire space with my glasses on, not engaging in anyone, not doing anything, not playing with anyone, because I really just want to get a lay of the land so that when I take my glasses off and I can't really see 100%, I know where places are. I can kind of find my way around without like looking like an idiot. Right. I mean, I think that's key, like to, to have an awareness of where you are in the space and like how to get through it, especially if lighting, like if um, you need a lot of bright light to be able to see, be aware that there's some spaces that are probably going to have less lighting or dimmed lighting on purpose, because one of the aspects of a gay bathhouse is to have anonymous hookups like this. This is not, you know, LinkedIn. You are not reading someone's profile, you know, and learning their whole story and their background. Um, is it possible you could meet someone in a bathhouse that has an app, you know, profile like for Growler or Scruff or Grinder or, you know, any of those things? Sure. But that is not what's being advertised when they're walking around in just a towel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be aware that, you know, if, if you need certain kind of elements or whatever that you may have to get, you know, find your way and, and be comfortable with whatever that is. And remember that you don't have to engage in things publicly. Like there are public spaces, but you know, it's kind of the whole point of like there being like some kind of cubby areas that are more private or stalls or uh, especially if you get a room or whatever. So yeah, lots of things. Uh, that being said, and kind of a wrap up, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask us. We'd be yeah. happy to answer them. Hey, if we need to do a LTES bathhouse part two, send in mm -hmm. your questions. And I'm sure we can get Daddy Hadrian back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guess what, folks? That's the end. Aw. Play ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sex or otherwise, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, you can also join our Entourage chat and chat up. Uh, with uh, plenty of people in there at tel tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col you can subscribe to our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col you have to do that on a computer but once you got that subscribed then as long as you can access your google calendar from it, something else you should be able to access it uh, you can get various uh, uh, merchandise at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud uh, such as things such as a cubs out loud sweatshirt that mr gary is wearing uh, and I forgot. I think he's the only one wearing something. That's fine. That's all right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We're actually looking to revamp those uh, in the near future. So uh, keep watch for that. We'll let you know about any changes. Uh, but we would appreciate all the patrons that uh, uh, support us right there at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on Google Play and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box that box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. Um, I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.
Yeah. Oh, wait. I was totally muted there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We just uh, I kind of went, Woo. Oh, I was like, what were you trying to say? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, it's so funny. Like, I have to, like, every time we do this, Thing, I have to think about the first time I ever went to a bathhouse, and that was that was quite the experience because I was twenty, and I was <sighs> so young <laughs> and so like stuff I can't do now. Like I can I can never do now. Happen that, that first time. Mine still lives in my memory as like a weird uh, Wes Craven Nightmare on Elm Street nightmare like like atmosphere kind of thing. It wasn't bad. It was just it was not an ideal first time situation. Mm -hmm. But I was so horned up to get off with this guy that I met up at the bar. Uh, yeah. So we went mm -hmm. and God bless it's been closed since then and it's not open anymore. But yeah, like it just... Maybe someday I'll turn it into like some, you know, a little movie or something, like as my <laughs> recollection is. And then who knows? Like a fun little story to tell the children. Mm. Precautionary tale is more like it. <laughs> oh my. All I'm going to say is like every time like that you get that tingle and like kind of like the red flags, like the alarms are going off. Maybe you should pay attention. Like I got out alive. I'm still here, but. Yeah. Ooh, girl. Just saying. That is, that is a fun story for another day. <laughs> Maybe we'll tell it at like Halloween or something. It'll be like, oh, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Bathhouse horror stories? <gasps> oh, girl. That, that, that. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry I uh, recommend it. I'm going to stop streaming. <laughs> 